Howdy everybody, this is Steve at Thousand Year Home. Welcome aboard. So I need to do a lot of work around here and this is quite the tool to get it done. So uh, I bought it from uh, my daughter who got it from a guy who owned a deer lease. So it has 300 hours on it. So I'm going to go ahead and do a 300 hour uh, tune-up maintenance on it. Nothing fancy. There's some things missing that I'm going to fix. Uh, air filter, oil, all that good stuff. New spark plugs. Uh, take a look at everything. Make sure nothing's wearing out. The CV joint that's beginning to leak and uh, I washed it and we'll check that but we'll start right at the front I don't know if the people that owned it put straight water in it or antifreeze so I'm gonna open it up and at least look at the color stick my finger in I don't have a checker for it but you know I can at least take a look at it and see if it's antifreeze let's see I believe it's a listen I think it might even be a 2017 it might be a few years old um, I could be wrong in that. I forget what year it was. It didn't matter to me. It was a great deal. So uh, the antifreeze might be getting to that point anyway. Let me go ahead and go to top that off. Also, it looks like uh, max cold. So the, the refill's not here either. So I'll go ahead and fill that up. Surprised I don't have any antifreeze. I'll double check that in the garage. But right off the reel, I'm finding something that I need to fix on that. Heat in Texas is a big deal. So this needs to stay cold. Checking to make sure that there's not a lot of dust and dirt and uh, filings all stuck to it. And there's not. There's nothing sticking to the radiator. So I feel good about that. So uh, I need to get some antifreeze. I don't have any. I should say before I start here, I'm using the Polaris uh, user manual online. I'll put the link in the window below. That's where you ought to go. And listen, all manufacturers should have a maintenance schedule as easy as the Polaris. It just lists right through. I'll do a screenshot of it. But uh, the only thing I'm not going to end up doing is the front gearbox. I don't have that. Uh, and there's a couple odds and ends. My brakes are acting a little funny. I'll have to look at that. And I'm not taking apart the clutch uh, to inspect it because everything seems to be working on that. But without further ado, let me jump in there. Do take a look at that Polaris guide. That'll help you a bunch. The next problem that I have here is this shifter. As uh, the top's popped off of it, it's all torn up. People have tried to pound it on in the field. and Well, it fills up with water. And then when you shift it, it throws water on your knee. So it's not the nicest thing in the world. So I bought a new shifter. Let's see if we can get that replaced. Almost looks like a Torx head down in there. Let's see what that was. It says it was a T25. Now obviously I could have bought the same cheap uh, plastic doodad that came out of there, but uh, why bother because that uh, snap on top is going to come loose. So I bought the least expensive all machined aluminum shifter there is, oh look, park rear, ooh, ooh, so fun, that's just awesome. All right. So it's got some uh, keys in there. You see that there's this Denobit shelf is shift keyed and that's keyed. So you can't hardly go wrong. When I buy my new trucks, I buy the service on them. And so I don't have antifreeze sitting around here. <laughs> I never do it myself. Oh, look at that. Doesn't that look nice? If you read it from the top down, park being all the way down, then reverse is next, neutral's next, lead on the high. But to me, uh, they, they could have uh, they could have not put those marks in there and it would have been more meaningful. Maybe I'm just being difficult. Most importantly though, having a machined aluminum shifter here will be really nice to not have the uh, water splashing on me. All right. 
Now on these rangers, the engine is underneath the, uh, the dump trailer, so you release it there. And then you've got all your engine exposed here. So I'm going to do the easy stuff first. I'm going to do the uh, air filter and then work towards the oil. I bought everything in a kit that came all at once. So there's uh, little spring clips here to remove the uh, air filter. All four sides. And you just wiggle it off the bottom. I'm gonna be honest, that's not too bad. Really, <laughs> not bad at all considering Texas. So that, that one's pretty nice. I might save that in case something bad happens, but uh, everything else I'm gonna dispose of. If you're looking for the part number, there you go. What does it say? 7081706. The case and box there isn't very dirty either. Like I see those deer releases, you know, if they have a uh, they have an outbuilding, things are just parked in it and then they just stay, you know. Well next up is let's take off those spark plugs. This is new to me, so I want to take those spark plugs off. I doubt they need to be pulled, I, I'm pretty sure they're just fine. But uh, I want to make sure that I understand what's going on with the, the machine. <clears throat> down in there. They're really long threads. There we go. Boy that that's that looks brand <laughs> brand new. I'm gonna put a new one in anyway since I'm here. And I uh, like the air filter, I'll go ahead and save it. I looked at the gaps, they're the same. I, I didn't gap them or anything. I just, whatever came out of there, it was starting, so. But that's where you want, to, want them to look anyway. You want them to look like that, brand new. Well, I am a genuine shade tree mechanic. Right now, the shade I picked is where the horses are, and it's uh, feed time, so I'm gonna time them up, feed them real quick. Feed time! Your place, please. there he's 30 some odd years old he's like not looking too bad chickens are up everybody's happy all right back to work now this oil filter is the worst in the world to get to it's it's right underneath that heat shield so I've seen guys take the whole bed off in order to get to that but uh, I'm just gonna bend the heat shield up by hand and bend it back when I'm done so that's all I'm gonna do so <laughs> nothing fancy here Oh boy, I still may not be able to reach it from here. No wonder why people are complaining so much. Right, scooching everything out of the way. It's pain in the neck. I know a guy 
guys are tearing the whole thing apart just to do this. Well, that's that long running joke. Do engineers hate maintenance guys, right? <laughs> Since the engineers are the mechanics who are at fault. There's no easy way to do this. You know, I, I don't like doing mechanic work uh, for exactly this reason. It's just a bunch of time out of my hand. But when I take it to the shops and they tell me they need two weeks to do an oil change or maintenance, what is that all about? That's not service. That's bull crap. You know, oh, we got so many back order. Well, then hire more employees. You know, nobody wants to leave their razor for two weeks for an oil change, you know? Same thing with my tractor. I, I'd rather that they did the maintenance for my tractor at the shop. And then they tell me once I trailer it and take it in there, two weeks, you know? What, what's with this magical two weeks for everything? Why can't I take a car in and get it changed that day, you know? So look, it comes with this little crush ring. I don't see a crush ring on there. I looked and didn't see a crush ring in. I don't think that's a part I need. I compared the new to the old. They look like they have the same threads. They look like the same diameter. I'm happy. I'm going to steal a little oil off the old one. And Now the manufacturing one, that had that little bolt in there and that was super handy. This is very, 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 very difficult. I'm not sure I put enough fairies in that difficult. Of course, I don't think it needs to be torqued down with a nut. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was about. Well, that's done. Let me put back the heat shield. And put back the breather. I'm going to drop that on the ground and figure out a way to... Um, Turn that filter one or two more times. I won't forget. All right. All right. I was able to reach in there and manually give a bunch of cranks on that. I, I, that was hard to get to. So guys are right about that. Let's check the oil cold. Boy, that looks good. Maybe a smidge and overfilled, but uh, pretty darn good. All right. Boy, that's clean enough. I don't even know if I want to change it. I guess I will. I don't know what it was doing on that deer lease, so I'll go ahead and change the oil. All right, the last thing I need to do is change the oil. I have gearbox oil, too. I might consider that, but everything that I've looked at so far has been in really good shape. So I figured out what this was. This is a crush washer for the oil seal now I, I pulled it out of the box with the filter so that's where they must put the crushable but that's for the drain plug all right and then i bought it this is a kit and i recommend and everybody does it i'll put the, the part down below i'm not getting paid for it but i bought a kit so i know i have exactly the right number of quarts and look at this they got a little pint in there too so uh of the right kind of oil and uh let me get underneath here and see if i can find the, the drain plug and drain the oil and uh, away we'll go. Everybody likes to drain their oil warm and uh, I don't always. <laughs> I don't think it makes any difference to be honest. They're like oh well you know if you drain if you run it then it gets all the sludge and brings it down. Well how is that different than when I turn off an engine and it just all runs down in the pan. Now I'm mixing the sludge back up in it in my opinion. So anyway I don't do that got an oil pan here. I'm hoping to keep this stuff off my arm. We'll see. I'll grab my cell phone and go underneath here with the cell phone. Let's see if I can find it that way without making a big deal of it. 
All right, I have all my Allen keys underneath here. So here I'm looking. There's something that looks like it could be an oil plant drain. And there's something that looks like it could be an oil drain. Eeny meeny. When I look, this one looks more like it's on a clutch. So I'm not ready to I'm not ready to do that one. Let's see here. I brought all my Torx and Allens and everything. I have no idea what, what size I'm dealing with here. It's the first time I've done this. First Ranger I've ever owned. I'll holler it out if I figure it out. That looks like it. It says it's a number six Allen wrench. Sure hope this is oil. <laughs> wow. Righty tidy lefty loosey. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Holy cow. Oh, wow. Wow, that was really something. Only scraped all the skin off of one elbow. That felt great. Man, that felt great. All right, I'm going to move my camera so it doesn't get oil all splashed on it. Looks like oil to me. Pretty black. I'm glad I am changing it. Hey, look at the magnet. Now the magnet's clean, everybody, so that looks real good. Just gonna let it drain there for a little bit. While that drains, I'm gonna replace that crushable washer. Well, I did put a new crushable washer on there. Listen, that was on with a lot more than little 12 foot pounds of pressure, man. That was that was really torqued on there. that we've got the oil all drained out of there. Let me double check that. Yeah. Pretty sure that was oil. It looked like oil. Look back in. Let's pull it out. I'm going to put in the full two big quarts before I do the little pint. See whether uh, if that's just extra that they gave me. Yep, it definitely needs that last pint. I mean, it hasn't all ran down in there, but it's showing low, a little low. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. That oil ended up being pretty black, so. The rest of it looked pretty good. The oil needed to be changed. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the gearbox, but you know, it's getting late. I'm not sure I want to do the gear gearbox this late at night. If I miss something, then I goof it up, you know. All right, let me turn on the key and run it for a little bit, see if it leaks anywhere.
You know, it does sound happier. All right, the sun is getting low in the sky. I don't think I want to do the gearbox because I've got to be able to see underneath the machine uh, where it's getting dark. So I'm going to put on the mirrors, which is the last bit of customization that I'm going to do. I really didn't want mirrors in the woods, but I use it often enough in the street that um, I do need mirrors, rear view mirrors in the street. So I'm going to put some mirrors on it right now. These are the little mirrors that I bought. Like that. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to sit in there and fiddle with it a little bit. It came with a lot of clamps. I bought an uh, extra set for my uh, truck, so or for my tractor rather. So we'll see if that'll work. I'm gonna let this run and see if I see any drips on it. So while I work on the mirrors, I'll let it run. And I do not think that uh, I've got bolts enough to fit said it's for this you know but I don't think so I don't see how at all there's no way that that's fitting through all right I've got mirrors on both sides little cheap mirrors I don't care if they catch anything they are zip tied on each zip tie probably does a couple hundred pounds so if I smack them it's not like I've lost this you know high dollar mirror and it's not like it'll break away it's uh, you know reflective um, metal <laughs> rather than glass nothing high-end which is perfect for a razor all right so I wasn't able to use any of these connectors that came with it it said it was for this, but you know how they just list every, you know, a Polaris and John Deere and every tractor in the world. So uh, I made it work without having to tap the metal. It's sturdy enough. I think it'll last as I drive around and bounce. We'll find out. If not, I'll, I'll tap it and put some real screws in it. So I'll hold on to these. Well, it's getting towards the evening, so I'm going to wrap up. I have yet to do the gear oil on that. And that's because, you know, you have to use these big syringes to fill them up and you watch your weepy. Eh, too bad it's not easier. So I want to see what I'm doing on that. I'm losing light. So I have that left to do. And then uh, I went ahead and ordered uh, steps 
for it to step up so then I have these steps to drill and tap and put in there and that thing won't be completely ready and uh, it looked great uh, 300 hours and now it's a few years old I, I honestly believe it's a 2017 so that makes it uh, seven years old but only 300 hours it looks like it's garage kept it's high-end a rhino a suspension a heavy-duty suspension under big tire so a nice unit the oil was a little old and it looked like it was uh, never changed because that looked like a manufacturing oil filter um, the spark plugs look great so I saved them the air filter meh, you know but I, since I had it out I replaced it so I'm gonna let it sit for the night and then I'll pull the pan out in the morning and turn it on and see if there's any dripping I didn't see any while it was running while I was doing the mirrors so uh, anyway let me go ahead and finish this up tomorrow well it is the next day uh, and I'm still working on the Polaris it's been so beautiful I've just been chilling uh, temperatures down in the 70s winds blowing oh, man I'll tell you through the heat of summer you know when you get to the other side uh, up north it'd be like the first day of spring after a long winter but uh, anyway it's it's hard to uh, to get back into the groove and want to work I just want to play so also in the front uh, is brakes and I mentioned earlier the brakes feel a little soft I took a look here there's a min max on the brake cylinder I do not see any fluid in there at all I understand that it's a dot four yeah Wow, that's really a stopper, I'll tell you. All right, let's see. Oh no, there's there's brake brake fluid right at the top. In fact, it's above the uh, above the max. Hmm. Three hundred hours don't feel like it should be any brake shoes to me. I might bleed all of them. Uh, I'll bleed all those later when Leah's out and uh, see if that fixes that problem. So I do know I need, uh, well, brake, brake fluid. I don't have it. If I bleed it, I'll need it. But also radiator fluid. Let's do the back now. That's where I cut off last night because I ran out of light and I didn't want to be messing with gear oil in the dark. You can see the, the gear oil fill plug right there. All right, so there's your inspection port and fill port at the top, and then of course my uh, drain plugs underneath. Let me go ahead and climb under there and get that going. Oh, man. Listen, they're not supposed to. Everything on this uh, from the factory has been torqued down too high. That should be 14 pounds, and uh, you see that uh, it's it's 114 pounds. It looks lefty loosey to me. Man, that is so ridiculous. So ridiculous. Now there is some gear uh, when you take a look at that. There you go. You see how there's uh, metal built up on there? You know, on the magnet. So I'm a little worried there. This, this one looks good. Nothing on it. Listen, y'all, the oil plugs don't need 150 pounds of torque, you know? 14, 16 pounds. That's what they need. When you put them too much on it, it, it crimps the uh, O-rings.
Now I bought this in a kit, so it's coming in. It's the right transmission fluid, says Polaris on it. So they sent uh, three quarts. I'm gonna put two in. The uh, one that I bought also came with the uh, a fill tube. I didn't have to buy that, it came in the, the bundle. So make sure you get that as well. really messed that up. It does not even close to the right dimensions. Ridiculous. Aggravating. That was really to me. I'll take it. Well, I only put a quart and a half of gear oil in that transmission for the uh, Polaris 11 uh, 1000. They sent me three, so I'm gonna have to look that up. Uh, the last thing I wanna look up is uh, any grease certs and see if there's anything I need to grease under that. Then I'm gonna pull it halfway off of this trailer and I'm gonna put on some uh, footsteps so that I can get up. It, it's too high for me just to jump up in there. And then my itty bitty buddy, little Leah, she, she definitely has a hard time climbing up. So let me check how many quarts this needs uh, online and I'll check uh, grease certs. Well, I went and double checked and it's uh, 44 ounces uh, of uh, gear oil in the back, AGL, it's gear oil, it's the right gear oil. And that's about 1.3 quarts and that's about what I put in plus a little spilled out. So I haven't done the front yet and I haven't done the front for two reasons. You saw how hard those were torqued in on the back where I had good access. The front is behind a bumper and it looks like I need a six inch key. And um, I don't have anything that long. I'll have to buy one <laughs> specifically. I'll give it a whirl once I back this thing off. Uh, I'm not going to back it all the way out. I'm going to leave it propped up because I want to put on uh, steps on the side. And I know that I have to do a little fabrication on that. But uh, the only thing I'm not going to end up doing is the front gearbox. I don't have that. Uh, and there's a couple of odds and ends. My brakes are acting a little funny. I'll have to look at that. And I'm not taking apart the clutch uh, to inspect it because everything seems to be working on that. But All right, this concludes my 300-hour maintenance for the Polaris. Um, just a lot of fiddling, right? And I installed some things that are missing. I, I put in a good shifter. I went ahead and put on some steps because I have the raised um, suspension and I changed the gear oil but not the front. It has a different type of gear oil in the front and uh, I've got to buy some tools for that. Uh, what else do I need? I need some um, a radiator fluid and uh, just a couple odds and ends, a seat cover. That's it. And uh, But I got mirrors on it so I could take it on the road, I could get up in it. So that concludes my repair and maintenance of the uh, Polaris Ranger XP uh, Razor uh, 1000. I think mine's a 2017 model. Everything else is pretty similar though. They don't change a whole lot. And uh, pretty happy with it. Now I can ride around and see what's going on behind me. Like, subscribe, follow me. Bye.